Alright, coming in at number 10 we have the deep space radio bursts. Mystery fast radio bursts were discovered in 2007. These bursts flash for a micro instant but emit more energy than the sun does in 10,000 years. The high energy surges of long waves have been detected 18 times over the past 10 years and one burst in 2012 recorded in Puerto Rico occurred numerous times in the same pattern. Ok, this is what it sounded like. After fierce debates and a lot of head scratching, the source of the sound was traced to a micro galaxy 3 billion light years away from Earth. A lot of theorists have concluded that the sound is a space signal from another world or a parallel universe looking to get in touch. Coming in at number 9 we have the man from Torrid. Were we sent a man from another parallel universe or did he arrive via some kind of portal or vortex? Our story here stems back to 1954 when a man was detained at the Japanese border after arriving on a plane from Europe to Hanada airport. The man said he was on his third business trip to Japan that year and he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies seeming to verify his business traveller status. When he presented his passport officials were absolutely baffled asking where he was from. Now the man who primarily spoke French said Torrid. Where is this mystery place? He showed his passport again and the stamps that supported his travels. The only thing is, nobody had ever heard of Torrid. The company he was travelling to said that they'd never heard of him and he was carrying a checkbook to a non existent bank. When he was asked to point out Torrid on the map, he pointed to where Andorra is today and seemed confused and offended to be told that it's not a real country. He was detained in a hotel overnight while Japanese authorities decided what to do with him, but by morning he disappeared. Did he accidentally walk through a portal to another universe? Maybe. Coming in at number 8 we have the Bernstein Bears Phenomena. Also called the Mandela Effect, the Bernstein Bears Phenomena claims to prove the existence of parallel universes with subtle differences. People vehemently claim that the Bernstein Bears were spelled with an E and not an A. And honestly, I for one absolutely thought that the Looney Tunes were the Looney Tunes until I watched a video on the phenomena last year and now I'm straight up convinced that I'm living in the wrong universe as it is clearly Looney Tunes. They're cartoons. This new world doesn't make any sense. Some people out there are also adamant that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the late 1980s, which is more than just a slightly altered timeline. It's not just spellings here, this is a pretty major parallel universe event. Coming in at number 7, we have Deja Vu. Deja vu, a glitch in the matrix or a signal from a parallel universe. While both seem as likely as one another, it is thought by some that the weird moments where we feel like we've been or experienced something before are actually signals that something key is happening in our parallel lives. Not only do some people believe parallel universes exist side by side, some people think they interact with one another in some way. According to Dr. Michio Kaku, an American futurist, deja vu occurs as a result of a person's ability to flip between universes. Others believe it is because we're vibrating in unison with the frequency of another universe that's parallel with our very own. Oh, I've gone cross eyed. Coming in at number 6, we have the Lost Beatles album. A parallel universe may have given our world a gift in the form of a Lost Beatles album, Everyday Chemistry. This story goes that in 2009, a man called James Richards found himself accidentally in a parallel universe, as you do. Luckily, there was also a person from another parallel universe there, a man named Jonas. Now, Jonas was on a trans dimensional tourism trip from the other Earth, and he he told Richards that in his world, amongst other things, John Lennon was still alive and the Beatles never broke up. Richards then stole a copy of a later album never released by the band and returned with it to our earth. What did he do with one of the most sought after pieces of music from a non history that almost but never happened here? He uploaded it to the internet. Eagle eared fans were absolutely having none of it though. They said the album is comprised of clever mashups from all of the Beatles' solo careers. Richards later said that even though in an alternate universe the Beatles hadn't broke up, that didn't mean their future music ideas disappeared. I'm not so sure about this one, but I would love to hear what Paul McCartney has to say about it. Paul, tell us, is it real? I guess you're living in another universe, so you don't know, but I don't know. 
I feel like you'd be able to answer. Coming in at number five, we have dreams. Could our dreams be signals from a parallel universe? Some say maybe. In a number of First Nations cultures in North and Central America, people believe that dreams allow us to walk planes in other dimensions. Their reasoning is that dreams take place in color and can include all of their senses. They think that when you're in a dream, you are in another world, perhaps a world you already exist in if you're doing doing something strange in your dream, maybe it's a sign that actually you live a far stranger life somewhere else. Coming in at number 4, we have the bruise. Anyone else here bruise like a peach? Just me? Me? And the universe. In 2010, along with a team of researchers, Stephen Feeney of the University College in London announced that he had discovered patterns in the radiation background left over from the Big Bang. Now, this seemed to suggest that our universe bumped into not one, not two, but four other universes and was left bruised. Okay, what is the plural of universes? Universe I? Universe I? Universe I. Also, from the bruising, further researchers in California think that it is clear that this leads to some kind of like bubble universe theory, which maybe I can get on board with. Maybe Men in Black got it right when they imagined us all as marbles in a big bag. Coming into number three, we have the cold spot. In 2004, astronomers found something that baffled them, an unusually cold area of space. The area is 1.8 billion light years across and much colder than its surroundings. The area also contained 10,000 less galaxies than in other areas of a similar size studied in space. A researcher from Durham University in the UK believed that the spot could be evidence of a multiverse. They said it seemed as if a parallel universe smashed into ours affecting it like a car pile up on the motorway would, only they're calling it a cosmic shunt. They believe the impact was so vast it pushed energy out from a big region of space, therefore creating the cold spot. It's hard to get your head around, but that is what they think. Coming in at number two, we have City in the Sky. In October 2015, Chinese TV went wild when thousands of residents in two areas of the country reported seeing a huge floating city in the clouds. Puzzled onlookers saw skyscrapers in the clouds and believed that they were seeing a ghost city or the colliding of our reality with a parallel universe. The phenomenon occurred in both Guangdong and Jiangxi, with some believing it was the beginning of an alien invasion. The images were caught on camera for the world to see and promptly went viral across the rest of the globe. So, what on earth or above earth is going on? Well, even though it looks like a city in the clouds to you and me, apparently. Apparently it is an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, which is a natural mirage. So that is what a lot of scientists are saying anyway, but other people are convinced it's a sign of a parallel universe or even a window to another world. Finally, coming into number one, we have black holes. The theory of loop quantum gravity suggests that there is no point of singularity in a black hole, rather there simply folds in the universe. Everything we know about quantum physics tells us that information is never lost, that energy can't be created or destroyed, so perhaps black holes don't suck and destroy maybe they suck and create. A lot of scientists are dabbling with the idea that black holes are indeed folds or portals to an older part of the universe. Professor Stephen Hawking gave a lecture in 2015 wherein he discussed how it may be possible to come out of the other side of a black hole. He said the hole would need to be large and if it was rotating it might have a passage to another universe but you couldn't come back to our universe. Anyone want to take that one way trip? I don't know if I do. So guys, are black holes portals to another universe? All right, at number 10, we're gonna be kicking off this list with the multiverse theory. If anyone at home is not a fan of science or has never picked up a comic book, then you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Information on this topic goes deeper than a fat kid in a ball pit, so I'm gonna give you the Coles notes on this. Since 1957, when physicist Hugh Everett first suggested it, scientists have proposed the idea that we could be living in an infinite landscape of universes. There are a ton of theories on how 
how this multiverse is composed, and I am not smart enough to break them all down for you, but I'll give you one example. A common idea is that there's a landscape of universes which are flat and go on forever, with universes sitting beside each other. Because this landscape is infinite, you can have universes that are drastically different. There could be universes where superheroes are real, and people read comic books about ordinary people to try and escape the stress of their super filled life. And there could be universes that are so similar to ours but slightly off. Like you could have blonde hair instead of brown hair. Or Twinkies could be healthy. With that tragic performance from Che, now coming in at number 9 are the Crossroads. So back in November of 1986, Pedro Oliva Ramirez was making his way from Sabia to his home in Alcala de Quadaira. Kodaira? I hope I said that right. As he was turning a corner, he found himself on a six lane highway that had never been on the route before. Either way, he hadn't done the journey for a while, so he assumed it could have been new. He continued down the highway, but he started seeing weird things like 20 story housing units, two feet high grass bordering the highway, and just unidentified metallic structures. After finally clocking something was off, he suddenly felt hot as hell in the car and started hearing voices in the distance, one of them which was telling him he was in another country in a different hemisphere. An hour into the drive to seemingly nowhere, Pedro finally gets to a sign pointing three ways. We have Malaga, Sabia, and Alcalabaya. Hope I said that right, I probably didn't. He took the Sabia detour and five minutes later he was outside of his house in Alcala de Guadaira, which literally wasn't even possible because he took the route which would have taken him back the way he came, meaning further away from his house. Like how did man like Pedro drive three hours to a sign and then end up back at home within five minutes? He even tried retracing his route but never found the crossroad or six lane highway again. And a six lane highway going missing? That is a big deal you guys. At number eight we have Deja Vu. That Feeling when you swear you've seen something before, like you can feel it in your bones. Some people think it could be your instincts telling you what's going to happen, maybe like a spidey sense. Maybe we all have spidey sense, we just don't know how to use it yet. Where other people say it's a delay in the communication between your left and right side of your brain. It's like when you're in a conversation with a group of people and you say something, then someone in the group says the exact same thing that you just said and you're like, you never listen to me, you're being a bad friend. But what if it's none of these things? What if it's you tapping into the frequency of another universe for just a moment? If parallel universe theory is right, there could be infinite universes. So there could be a universe exactly like this one, but just a little bit ahead. Deja vu could be you getting a glimpse into this space for a moment and then returning back to our reality. This was suggested by physicist Michio Kaku in his book Parallel Worlds. Maybe every time you feel like you've been somewhere before, it's another version of you that has been, and for a brief moment you're connecting to them. If I could tap into this ability, I would make so much money gambling. Filling on number 7 slot is Lisbia. So back in 1905, a man was caught by police in Paris for attempting to steal a loaf of bread. And I mean geez you guys it's just bread, just let him have it, cut the man some slack. They ended up taking him to the station and questioning him and they soon realized he couldn't speak a language. He didn't understand or speak French, he spoke something that sounded Sounded like Esperanto, but wasn't and had different grammar to it. After trying to communicate with him for hours, they finally found a way to ask him where he was from, to which he replied, Lisbia. And at the time, the police just thought that was his way of saying he was from Lisbon, but then he didn't understand or speak Portuguese, which sus, very sus. But again, it's fine because he could have been from Lisbon but been brought up somewhere else and never learned the language. Like, it is fine, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Strange man. But then, when given a map of Portugal, he had no clue what he was looking at whatsoever, so the officers eventually realized the man meant Lisbia was a country. We're at no. No one knows what happened to the man or where he went, but maybe he just crossed over back to his universe and made his way back to Lisbia. I don't know. Can I get a visa? I'd like one. For number six, we have strange artifacts. There have been items that are still puzzling archaeologists as to where they have come from and how old they are. It's like when you wake up after a blackout and you find a half eaten, uncooked, frozen pizza on your floor, and you have 30 text messages sent out to your ex, and you're like, what happened last night? 
Well, this is kind of like that, but with more science. One of the best examples of this is the London Hammer. It was discovered in 1936 and it seems to be a man made iron hammer, but it was found in a mound of rock that's over 400 million years old. And I might be wrong about this, but I don't think there was any hammers back 400 million years ago. How did a human tool work its way all the way back to before the dinosaurs? Perhaps it was blasted through a wormhole from another dimension. Hopefully not with the guy who made it still holding on to it. One minute you're blacksmithing a sword and the next you're getting devoured by an 8 foot tall centipede. There was also the blue rock that was discovered in Sierra Leone. This rock was sent to research labs around the world but no one was able to identify its origin or link it to any other known rocks. Coming in at number 5 are the beetles. And this one is debatable because it really comes down to whether we want to believe this person or not, so let's just go with it. So back in 2009, James Richards was driving home in California with his dog. We love a good doggo appearance. You are a good boy. Don't let anybody tell you different. Now he ends up pulling over because the dog has to pee and we all know dogs have 3 second attention spans so off it goes chasing a rabbit. Now James springs into action and starts chasing after her but trips and hits his head on a rock and ends up unconscious. Like already this is sound like a very bad remake of Alice in Wonderland without the hallucinogenics so what is going on here? Now when James finally woke up he was next to an odd machine and a man called Jonas who claimed he found his body while on a work trip for the interdimensional travel agency that he worked for. Do you have openings Jonas? Can I apply? What do you need? What do you need for the CV? I'm there for it. Either way they end up talking for absolutely ages and start discussing the differences in pop culture because that's apparently the number one thing you want to know about a parallel universe like not world leaders or climate change, pop culture. Yes, I'm a nerd. Either way, James ended up finding out that in Jonas's universe or dimension, the Beatles also existed. They were all still alive and they were all making music. And I know anyone can say that, but Jonas even gave him a cassette called Everyday Chemistry, which had Beatles songs on it that never existed in our dimension. Those songs are actually on the BeatlesNeverBrokeUp.com if you do want to check them out. But damn, Jonas, you have my attention now. All right, at number four, we have the Mary Celeste. This one has been baffling people for centuries. It's one of the greatest missing person stories of all time. It was back in 1872 when the Mary Celeste set sail. It was a cargo ship packed with booze and it never made it to its destination. It was found off the coast of Portugal with its entire crew missing. Not only that, but the cargo was intact, so they weren't attacked by pirates. The crew still had their belongings on board, so it was not likely that they left by their own will. There's a chance that the whole crew went mad and jumped overboard, or a portal from another dimension opened up and they all got sucked into a different universe. There could have been a bunch of dudes from the 17th century running around in a futuristic world. It would have been like every primetime show from the 90s with a time travel plot. They're from the past, but now they're in the future. What will they do? Find out watching Anchored in Time, 8pm on Fox. Filling our number 3 slot is the wrong Riverside. This one follows a woman called Carol Chase McElhaney who is driving from San Bernardino to Paris, California. Now, On her way there she passed a sign for Riverside which is where she grew up. So she she decided to make the pit stop there to relive her childhood and have some nostalgic vibes because we all love a cheeky nostalgic vibe don't we. She started driving to the street she grew up on but her old house was nowhere to be found and none of the houses were recognizable to her at all. And it wasn't like everything had been bulldozed over and reconstructed, it just wasn't the same. Straight up it was different. Freaked out Carol drove to her grandma's old street to find that that was looking different as well. She then went to the cemetery where both her grandparents were buried to find no cemetery at all but a fenced up a lot with weeds everywhere in its place. At this point Carol was like am I being punked? Where is Ashton Kutcher? Like is he gonna come out? As a final grasp at sanity she went to University Avenue, a street where there were usually restaurants and hotels but now there was just a bunch of graffiti and run down buildings and the people there were just off. No one was smiling, they were all wearing black and Carol was getting the feeling that if she spoke to any of them she'd be stuck in that place forever. But our girl did not give up there. She spent the next few hours trying to find something from her past and Riverside and when she came up short she finally went home. Years later Carol's father died and was going to be buried at the same cemetery in Riverside and when Carol arrived in town everything was how it was from when she was young. So how did she happen upon a Riverside from a different dimension that was just bad and now she's back in the regular one? I don't get it. I don't get it. 
And at number two, we have the cold spot. When you flip your pillow over and it's cold on the other side, that's because there's a small amount of cold radiation buildup on the other side of your pillow from a parallel universe. That thing I just said, that is completely made up. Cold radiation? I'm an idiot. The cold spot is actually an area in our universe that is 1.8 billion light years away. Through what's called microwave background mapping, we've been able to map the cosmic rays in the universe, possibly back to the Big Bang. Through this technology, scientists were able to locate this cold spot. The reason this massive field was colder was because it had 20% less mass in it than it should. Why does this area have less mass? Well, because it was just hot girl summer? Don't you remember? Sorry if this cold spot is too skinny for you. Well, actually, some scientists think that this could be from another universe crashing into ours. The force of these universes colliding caused a massive amount of energy to fly out, thus making the area colder. This could be the doorway into another universe where the laws of physics are completely different from what we understand. Now you just need to make the 1.8 billion light year trip to get there. And finally, at Number one is the interdimensional tunnel. Now this story actually came from the book Hunt for the Skinwalker, and this particular story is about the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Now this ranch is infamous for strange happenings. People who have spent the night there have seen things they don't even know how to talk about or explain. So how the hell am I meant to tell you guys about them? I can't. Well, in this book, a hunter that the author met describes seeing an interdimensional tunnel open up on the ranch. He saw it through his binoculars, and initially it just looked like a bright yellow circle, but it started getting deeper and deeper and that wasn't even the worst part. Then a huge faceless creature crawled out of the circle and then disappeared into the woods and mind you this massive shining portal was still open for business and ready to pump out more faceless monsters. Like are we just gonna push that under the rug? I guess so. The hunter left the area ASAP Rocky and never went back there but he's been utterly convinced ever since that tunnel or portal was to another dimension or universe and honey I believe you, you're preaching to the converted. Coming to number 10, we have the invisible car crash. Now, there are tons of ways to explain real life glitches. When you see someone lag on camera, that could have just been the recording. When you see a plane stalled in the sky, like we had on our last video, that could be explained through some clever editing. But I don't really know how you fake a car crash like the one I'm about to show you. Yeah, you guys just saw what I just saw, right? That was a car that was crashing into nothing. There was a car that was zooming along the highway and then it smacked into an invisible barrier. Now, this could have been some pole in the road that was angled so perfectly that the driver and the camera couldn't see it. Now that is possible, but highly unlikely. How could something that thin and small be strong enough to cause a moving car, a car that's going about 60 kilometers an hour to stop in its tracks? Was there some sort of invisible force field there? that was left on by accident? Or could this just be someone spending hours editing something strange to put out as disinformation to make us all very confused? Either way, I would be pissed if I was the owner of that car. You don't do anything wrong, and then something invisible causes your car to be a write-off? Is that even covered under your insurance? Coming at number nine, we have sailing in the sky. If you have it in your mind that you will never reach the level of wealth to afford a sailboat, well, let me tell you that there's a whole other level of wealth that we have no idea about. There is a class of people who have been taking their boats to the skies. Aren't we all seeing that right? Now I have no idea how reflections off the water will affect your camera and how it will pick that up, but that looks like someone got their boat to fly through the sky at a very reasonable pace. I mean, that boat is just cruising along, not too fast or slow. Sky sailing is a brand new thing, and this guy has already mastered it. But how on earth is that happening? Is there some new boat-shaped plane that we don't know about? I mean, that does sound like something that Elon Musk would make. Tesla has a car that looks like a tank, and now they have a plane that looks like a boat. Coming at number eight, we have teleporting, time traveling, or NPC. I would imagine that sometime in the future, we will lock down teleportation. I don't know if time travel is on the table, but who knows? If we went back a hundred years and got someone to eat Korean fried chicken, they might have an overdose from all the flavor. But if people are working on it, you would imagine it would take some time to work out all the kinks. In this next clip, we might be seeing the early stages of people glitching reality so they can teleport.
you see that massive truck had to swerve out of the way so that they didn't crash into that lady. Some random woman appeared out of nowhere, and it looks like she has a perfectly clean lab coat on. I mean, I don't know how someone would end up walking around in the middle of the highway miles away from any town, but they usually don't dress like they came right out of the lab. She seems so calm even though she was almost hit by a truck. Usually when a 16-wheeler has to swerve out of the way so it doesn't crash into me, I wet my jeans just a little bit. But she's just strolling like she knew she was going to be safe, or she's a poorly programmed NPC. Next on the list, we have Brady Fiegel Squared. There are a lot of people in this world who say they have found their twin. I'm looking at you, David Diggs. If I get tagged in one more picture of you, I'm gonna have to chase you down and take a side-by-side -side picture so people know we're not the same person. But even though David Diggs and I kind of look the same, we have nowhere close to the same similarities as Brady Fiegel and Brady Fiegel. For one, both these guys have the exact same name. On top of that, they both play professional baseball. On top of that, they are both left-handed pitchers. This seems pretty rare and you would expect this to be the point where the similarities end. Well, guess what? There's more. For one, they both look almost identical. They both have had the same surgery from the same doctor and they even dress similar wearing the same glasses. It would seem that the random person generator that populates this planet with people might have glitched and made two copies of the same dude. People thought that they might have been long lost twins that were separated at birth. A DNA test showed that that wasn't true, but they did have the same German ancestry. Coming in next on the list, we have the cat reflection. I don't know what kind of software is going into making the mirrors in our giant simulation world, but it would seem that this is a place ripe for glitches. Oh, and just so we're clear, I'm not a believer in simulation theory. I just like playing along with the theme for this list. But even though though I think that everything can be explained logically, this next clip is a little trippy. The CPU that is in charge of getting everything running must have been putting the computing power somewhere else when this went off. I mean, that would be a good sign to tell if you are an important person if you think simulation theory is real. Like, if this is indeed a simulation, I'm going to play with this idea for a moment, and there are a bunch of glitches around you, that would mean that the universal computing power is being used somewhere else on more important and interesting people. So, if you see those glitches, that's your sign to step up your game because your life is boring. Next on the list, we have Mark Zuck is a Matrix program. If there's anyone that could be a lizard person or a robot or an alien or some sort of simulation-based software person that has been put into the world to control us and cause havoc, it would be Mark Zuck. Zuckerberg. And there have been several moments where people have caught this poor excuse for an alien trying to be a human acting weird. But this one has to be my favorite. You need to focus and, um, and try not to let stuff bother you as much as possible. But it is going to bother you because you're human. And, and I was human. I am human. Still. Um. The Zuck was caught red-handed saying that he wasn't a human. That has to be one of the most obvious glitches ever. The programmers would have been like, who's in charge of writing the script for Zuck? Zuckerberg, and why did you make him act like a robot and make references to not being human because you're blowing our cover big time? I mean, let's say in the next few years there's a massive revolution and we get into a bunch of secret files about which famous people living among us are aliens and which ones are humans, I would be more surprised to find out that this guy is actually fully human. Next on the list, we have the rain spot. I mean, we all hate bad weather, so I think many of us would prefer if we could condense it into one spot and have everything else nice all the time. Well, I guess there must have been a trial run for some new rain patches because that's what we got here. It would seem that for some reason the clouds in that area have glitched out and the rain is pouring down in only one spot. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Now that has to be some sort of glitch or the plot to a children's book called The Loneliest Rain Cloud. A book about a cloud that is rainy all the time, but all the other clouds around him are nice so he has no friends. And he travels around everywhere trying to make friends, but everyone runs from him because they don't want to get wet. Someone get my publicist on the phone because I have a book to write. Next on the list, guys, we have the smart 
smartphone time traveler. One of the wildest things ever caught on camera is the footage from a Mike Tyson fight that looks like there's someone filming the fight in the background. The reason that this is so weird is because the footage is from 1995, and even though there were some phones back then that could have been considered smartphones, there was nothing released that had a camera on it. That wouldn't be released for another five years. And when you look at the footage, it seems like that phone is a very modern smartphone. Now, this could have been some device that simply looks like a phone, and people have been making the case to say that this is in fact a smartphone, so they can argue that time travel is real, but really we have no idea what happened here. We have no idea who was recording this Mike Tyson fight with this mysterious device. Next on the list, guys, we have a plane vanishes. Now there have been a lot of reports of all sorts of stuff like this. Like apparently all of the alien stuff that happened in Roswell, New Mexico, that was all faked by the government because they were testing out experimental aircrafts and they decided that making people think that aliens were real was safer than telling them what the military was up to. So what you're about to see might be some secret government aircraft caught on camera, or it might be a glitch. I mean, you all saw what I just saw, right? There was a plane there and then it was gone. Everyone was focused on it. It was in the sky and then it blinked out of existence like half the people in Avengers Infinity War. Also, random question for the comments. Would you rather be one of the people who blinked out of existence when Thanos snapped his fingers and then came back three years later to a whole new world? Or would you have rather been there the whole time and lived through the whole thing and saw the world post snap? Well, whoever was on the plane seems like they didn't have a choice in disappearing because because now they are for sure gone. Unless the sky is all a massive projection and that was just a glitch on one of the screens. And coming in at the number one spot, we have the Pope vanishes. Now I will start off by saying I have no idea what the Pope does and what his powers are. Can he fly? Can he control the weather? Does he have telekinesis? I never went to church, so I don't know. So the clip that went viral of him vanishing about a year ago might be one of his holy powers or it was a glitch that no one was supposed to see. Let's take a look. That was something that was seen from the Pope's balcony as he was addressing people about the COVID-19 pandemic. After his speech was done, he just vanished and there were several news outlets that showed the exact same thing. So this wasn't just a broadcast that screwed up. Some say this might have been a hologram of the Pope because he was actually isolating somewhere and didn't want to catch the virus. I mean, we know that hologram tech is real. Most of us have seen that massive Tupac hologram that came out years ago. And if anyone has access to the latest and greatest hologram tech, it has to be the Pope.